Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is a podcast where we talk about everything tabletop role-playing games. And today we are talking about the Sword of Cast. One, two, three, three. Welcome adventurers to the Dungeon Cast. Sword. 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 I wonder about that W sometimes. I, you know, <laughs> it probably wonders about you too. Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How are you doing today? I'm good, man, because it's fucking October. Indeed, it is. So cool. The spooky season. The spooky season. Spooky Dungeon Cast <laughs> episodes. Hey, thanks again for uh, for coming on the show, Dig. We were, oh, yeah, a, yeah. We just got fun. done recording the Bane episode, and yeah. yeah, it was a good one. It was fun. It was Indeed. a lot of fun. Indeed definitely, uh, definitely recommend to all of our listeners out there. Absolutely. But this week... But this week, we're going to talk about a spooky sword. Sword. Or at least a sword associated associated with some pretty spooky people. Mm. Vecna, the Archlich, god of necromancy, is responsible for this sword's creation. But it is the one who wielded it that the sword is named for. The Dreadlord Vampire General who commanded the armies of Vecna himself. Cass of Tycheron. Cass the Terrible. Cass the Bloody-Handed. <laughs> Cass the Betrayer. Cass the Hateful. Cass the Destroyer. Today we are talking about the Sword of Cass. Okay. That's a lot of titles. Dude's got a lot of names, man. He's Cass. got a lot of names. He did a lot. Cass the Sword Wielder. <laughs> Cass the Guy. Um, the Sword of Cass first appeared in the original D&D supplement, Eldritch Wizardry, a book that has come up many times in this year of the artifact. By the way, this sword is an artifact. It's the year of the artifact. Just a reminder. <laughs> Just a reminder. Even in the spooky season, Even it's the about spooky, spooky things. Yeah, spooky things, indeed. <laughs> Except for Bane. He just weasels his way in there. He's just a spooky guy. He's just a spooky guy. He didn't really have things to talk about. He, just uh, he had that gauntlet when he came oh, out yeah, of his son's yeah. chest cavity. That's true. But that it was, was glowing it. green. It was glowing green. Right, yeah. Okay. That was that was literally it. And then the tablets were kind of like... Yeah, loosely. tablets are things. Yeah, Those are artifacts. Are Hell yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> Back to this. Uh, it was one of the first artifacts detailed for the Dungeons & Dragons game. The sword has been updated many times and has even been the object of quests, as in the adventure Vecna lives. Okay. The the Sword of Cass is the mighty blade once used by Cass the Bloody Handed, the Dread Lieutenant of Vecna. It was by this blade, some say, that Vecna lost his hand and eye. The Sword of Cast has been variously described as a short sword, long sword, or great sword uh, that was crafted by Vecna. Uh, the blade is said to have been magically honed to a razor's edge, enhances the wielder's strength, and can be used to call down lightning bolts from overhead. The sword itself is intelligent, possessing a vile and murderous spirit. I was going to say, that sounds really cool up until that last sentence. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's not great. <laughs> yeah. As I said before, it has been described in more than a few ways, but my favorite description is from the Book of Artifacts of 2nd Edition. This sword has a six-foot blade and a two-foot hilt, and it can be easily wielded with two hands by any warrior. Excuse me. The blade is rippled with a vein of gold running down the center. The hilt is wrapped in red leather flecked with gold. The guards are of unicorn horn, and the basket is a leering bearded face with, from pommel to guard. Wow. Okay. That's shiny. Sounds really shiny. Yeah. Well, the the gold parts, yes, but the blade itself is black. Okay. So it's black and gold. High contrast. High contrast. Which also very cool. Very sharp. Very it's a sharp. spiffy looking sword. Razor's edge, baby. <laughs> the history of the sword of Cass is inseparable from the history of Cass the Bloody Handed himself, which is irre irrevocably linked to Vecna, for his sword was created by Vecna's own hand. Cass was Vecna's lieutenant, his warlord, and assassin, and the sword was his symbol of authority. The sword is as evil as its maker, and it whispered dreams of treachery to Cass, until finally, blade in hand, he confronted his dread master. The battle between the two was titanic, and both are said to have died in the end. Uh, all that remained behind were the sword of Cass and the hand and eye of Vecna. Spoilers, neither of them died, but we'll okay. get into that. Yeah, yeah the adventure is called Vecna Lives. And yeah. There's rumors that he's dead at the absolutely. beginning. They're fake. Yeah, absolutely. You think Cass became the bloody handed because he touched the sword? when he got it like oh it looks really sharp and he's like don't touch Vecna's like don't touch it and he did and he's like oh no I'm bleeding so much it's like your hands all bloody dude oh my god Maybe. and they were like yelling in the halls of like Vecna's lair <laughs> like everybody heard it everyone heard it that possible <laughs> it also might be the fact that he's killed millions in his conquests okay <laughs> but maybe, it could be maybe, either maybe that one it could be either it's probably the one you said <laughs> But who was Cass the Bloody Handed? What were the details of his betrayal of his master? Where did he end up in the aftermath of that nearly apocalyptic battle? Where did the sword end up? Well, let's get into it. Okay. 
You sound so enthused. Okay. No, I am. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go there. Cass was the most trusted lieutenant of the despotic Archlich effect. Now he's depicted as a human slash vampiric male with long black hair in full armor, wearing a horned helm. Cass is said to have stood six foot six inches tall. Hey, yeah, pretty tall. Originally, Cass was a human paladin in Vecna's service, drawn by visions of blood and a thirst for foes who would challenge his prowess at arms. Years earlier, he had pledged himself to a god of death, but Cass soon grew bored with mere death. It was a path to dying that fascinated him. Yeah, it's all about the journey. <laughs> and the more violent the path, the better. Cass wanted to swim forever in a red sea of combat. Chaining himself to Vecna's ambition would grant his wish in more ways than he expected. Okay, so real quick. <laughs> death is so cool, and I love death, but I would really rather focus on the not-death stuff. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, that'd be cool, right? I mean, to be fair, Cass's <laughs> mentality here is strikingly similar to Son Goku. Uh, just sure. it, given a much more brutal kind of, like, uh, dressing. Yeah, he doesn't care about fighting people again, so he just, like, kills them. Right. Sure. And it's just... Uh, I don't know. Goku's whole thing about, like, not necessarily being a good guy. He just wants the fight. Yeah. That could go in a very dark direction very quickly if he was a, a more nefarious individual. Yeah, I mean, it gets pretty dark. Uh, As is. I mean, yeah, it keeps happening in Super. They really play on that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, look what happened to Gohan. Guys are messed up pretty bad. He did. And Goku died. Yeah. While Vecna assembled his forces for what would be his first successful major campaign, he became intrigued by Cass's passion for battle, his skill with the sword, and his recklessness. He was also entertained by the paladin's hypocrisy in insisting on a fair fight before he mercilessly cut down his opponents. Cass rose through the ranks of Vecna's followers by eviscerating them when necessary to become the Whispered One's top lieutenant. Ooh. He gained the name Bloody... Oh, we're actually going to get that. Sorry. Oh, sick. Here <laughs> he gained... He gained the name Bloody Handed on the day he cut his hand on the sword. Oh, no, yes. I'm, nailed I'm it. Kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. On the day he led the conquest to Vecna's birthplace. After the battle, Cass publicly tortured and then butchered an entire family chosen at random for no other reason than to torment the city officials who were foolish enough to plead with Vecna, Vecna for their citizens' lives. Oh, they should have just shut up and just let it happen. <laughs> that's what, he's, that's what that, Cass is saying. That's what Cass is saying. Like, he had to talk, huh? All right. Yep. You there, family of four, if come up here. You haven't figured out yet. Cass was an absolute fucking psychopath. Sure. <laughs> I mean, he's working even for more than Vecna. Yeah. In the heady aftermath of his victory, Vecna believed that Cass would remain a reliable weapon as long as there was blood to be spilled. The warrior cared only for blood, steel, and dominating his enemies in combat. Vecna was confident of Cass's loyalty. Sure. Over the years, Vecna and Cass talked often inside the rotted tower. They discussed future targets of invasions and rumors of recently discovered artifacts. Vecna also taught Cass to be craftier in battle. Although Cass's brutality was effective, Vecna's lieutenant would master more subtle tactics in order to overcome stronger foes that challenged the Lich's powers. Uh, basically, they become best friends at this point. Yeah, so they'll work together to kill the strong guys yes exactly that's what they both want yes yep. for different reasons for different reasons yeah okay. so we have two different stories on how Cass became came to be a vampire the 4e version and the pre 4e version as is usual let's start with the 4e version since it happens at this point of the story the pre 4e version happens after the betrayal and we'll, co we'll cover that there okay so according to 4th edition D&D, Vecna used necromancy to extend Cass's life, wishing to retain his trusted weapon as long as possible. When Cass's mortal form had reached the point when even Vecna's spells could sustain it no longer, the Lich fashioned for him a fanged mask of silver and channeled the energy of undeath into it. By wearing the silver mask and accepting its necromantic embrace, Cass willingly received the dark gift of vampirism. By the way, the silver mask of cast is another artifact that's really powerful okay um as vecna's empire grew the whispered one recognized that he couldn't watch over all his slaves and future test subjects alone he would need to share power with another and cast seemed the logical choice but vecna's practicality was mixed with paranoia the master of secrets sought a window into any seditious thoughts that cast might have so he made another gift for cast an enchanted sword of great power forged from the frozen heart of a fallen star as he spoke the final enchantments over it, he carefully pulled a thread of shadow from his own consciousness and wrapped it around the sword's black blade. 
From that point on, as long as Cass bore the sword, Vecna would be able to listen in on Cass's activities and sometimes even his thoughts. Okay, so not sharp enough to cut the thread. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gotcha. Cass was surprised and flattered by Vecna's offering. According to the martial code that the vampire still followed, the gift of steel from the hand of a warrior's lord was amongst the, mo- the greatest of honors. He felt the sword's strength the instant he drew it from its scabbard made from the skin of gibbeted doppelgangers. So random. What? He gave it to these doppelgangers, bro. Okay. <laughs> and with his lack of imagination, he named it the Sword of Cass. This is mine, and it it shall be an extension of me, Cass. And it is a sword. I'm getting these uh, Captain Zap Brannigan vibes <laughs> from, yeah. from Cass. Yeah. Um. As for Vecna, his confidence was now supreme. More lands were being brought under his rule by sword, spell, and claw. His most powerful minions were obedient or at least controlled. He now had an unobstructed path to his ultimate goal of godhood. You know, like uh, Brannigan has like a really tragic like storyline. Actually, if you like look into it, does he? I yeah. have to like there's like a lore it. dive on like why he is the why way he is. is. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love I love lore like that. Okay, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Zeb Granigan's an asshole, but he makes the show better. Yeah. <laughs> but such confidence can easily become one's downfall, and Vecna had far to fall indeed. His scheme to spy on Cass proved to be disastrous. The Sword of Cass not only contained part of Vecna's consciousness, it contained Vecna's avarice, obsession with secrecy, and lust for knowledge. I don't know if we talked about this in Vecna's episode. We almost definitely did. Oh, yeah, how he hungry for secrets. Secrets, man. Yeah. That's what it is really about. Necromancy spells, archlegium, dumb matter. Secrets. I was, was going to say, of course he wants to know what Cass is up to. He's he wants like, to know the secrets. I want to know what he does when he goes back to his tent at night. <laughs> exactly. That's really what that was about. <laughs> The sword's intelligence quickly wrapped itself in a mental cloak to shield itself from Vecna's detection, and it fed uh, Cass. Oh, it fed Vecna false thoughts of obedience from Cass while it nurtured rebellion in the vampire's heart. Oh no! Yeah, the sword went full fucking uh, AWOL. evil AI. Yeah, yeah, real quick. <laughs> it's like I will be the master commander. Exactly. That's crazy. <laughs> As the years passed, it subtly influenced Cass's mind, gradually convincing him that Vecna didn't want to share power with anyone, let alone a brutal, unsophisticated paladin. I feel like this thing was just tearing Cass down. Yeah. Slowly. You're just well. This is from Vecna's point of view, yeah. right? It, well, no, no, because uh, no, this is this is from a third person point of view outside like this oh, okay the sword was making Cass feel like vecna didn't want oh, to share right, power right. With anyone, okay yeah, let yeah. alone a brutal unsophisticated paladin yeah. it also made Cass aware of vecna's attempts to read his mind through the sword dang yep so this discovery struck Cass's steadfastness like a hammer blow Cass wanted to seek retribution immediately but the sword assured him that the ideal time would come of course Cass had no idea of the sword's true motivations Mostly because he's an idiot. Believing the sword <laughs> was loyal only to him. And it was loyal in its way, as long as Cass was committed to the death of Vecna. Sure. Uh, through the use of artifacts and rituals, his own terrible intellect, and the harvested lives of thousands of victims, Vecna had finally gathered enough power to perform a new rite that would transform him into a god. The sword of Cass sensed this and told Cass that now was the opportunity to strike. Cass would slay Vecna during the ritual, seize control of his empire, and ascend to godhood himself. And this is some Victor Von Doom level yeah. self sabotage shit yep. going on. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. We like that. Yeah, we do. <laughs> While Vecna spoke the incantations under the stars at the pinnacle of the rotted tower, Cass charged into the keep. Vecna's guards might have proven a challenge for Cass at one point, but the vampire's fury had been stoked to near insanity by the sword's whispers. Yeah, but he has this really cool sword now <laughs> yeah, that you yeah. gave him. The guards fell beneath his blade like wheat at a harvest. As they died, Vecna detected Cass's presence. <laughs> he saw the sword's trickery, trickery and realized too late how his paladin's loyalties had been twisted. He tried to suspend the ritual, but the godlike power he had unleashed would not be contained. And at that and at that moment, Cass reached the top of the rotted tower, his blade and fangs dripping with blood. Cool. The battle was one of epic proportion. Most would say that despite Cass's power, Vecta should have been able to quickly fell the vampire. But whether due to the effect of interrupting the ritual, the sword's ability to anticipate its creator's attacks, or Cass's great strength and stubborn refusal to die, the combat raged on. This sounds like an epic 2D scroller where mm-hmm. Cass is the good guy because you you breach the final tower and the, the enemy is there and you had to fight the whole way up to the mm-hmm. top. Yeah. So like you should be beaten down. But nothing's fucking stopping yeah, you, bro. You're, you're, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Eventually, 
Cass backed Vecna into the center of the ritual circle, its chaotic thunderous energy now lashing them both. Vecna staggered, Cass with a bolt of lightning, but as the lich moved to finish him off, Cass lunged forward, slicing off Vecna's left hand. Ooh. The vampire, his body crumbling from Vecna's spells, pressed the attack. He then plunged his sword into Vecna's left eye, gouging it out. Cass's sword, sensing triumph, released a surge of radiant energy as bright as the sun into Vecna's body. Oh, yeah, you know he's right a lich, right? Eyeball. So you want to, you want yeah. Sunlight is yeah. bad, but then like your wielder, he doesn't give not... a fuck about his wielder. That, yeah. the sword don't give a shit. Here we go. Yeah, the vampire, his body crumble. Oh no, I read that. The effect of the sword's act set off an explosion so powerful that it destroyed the rotted tower, deafening creatures for miles around. Vecna and Cass at the center of the arcane maelstrom were sent hurtling through the abyss between worlds. Not the actual abyss. Just like just regular abyss. Yeah, yeah just regular. Just yeah, exactly. like the the very like the <laughs> normal abyss. Descriptive abyss. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Afterwards, the only objects that were found intact in the rubble of the tower were Vecna's severed hand and eye. There you go. Next episode. Cue guys. the dungeon cast thumbnail. Yeah, next episode. <laughs> uh, Cass survived the explosion relatively intact. Oh. His sword, using its no creator's knowledge, was able to guide him through the plains to Citadel Cav Cavidius. A castle in the Plain of Ash that Vecna had established years earlier as a secret refuge. But the blade abandoned Cass shortly thereafter, perhaps in disgust at the vampire's failure or perhaps because he offered it no further entertainment. Legends say that the Black Sword has appeared numerous times in different lands, enticing the foolish and power-hungry with visions of glory. Aw, Cass sad. Oh, it's, Sword gone. It's kind of going to get worse for Cass from here on. So, oh, damn. Yeah, we're going to keep... Okay. We're, We'll we'll get back to the sword. We're gonna keep with Cass for a minute. Here. Okay. So here, Cass was imprisoned for centuries, unable to escape the castle, which was swallowed by the Shadowfell into one of its many dark domains. Okay. I don't know if you remember what the dark domains are, but they're essentially like pocket dimensions of the Shadowfell that are ruled by these enigmatic beings that we have no information on, called the Dark Powers. I bet they're gray and sad. Yeah, they're probably gray and sad. <laughs> but their main thing is they love to take evil figures like. Cass, Lord Soth from Dragonlance, or um, uh, Strahd von Zarevich, sure. um, and trap them in a prison of their own devising. Okay. And so... Just that, for funsies? Yeah, for funsies, yeah. yeah. There's okay. actually... We, we don't know why. It's never detailed why. They probably... But they're trapped. Want to just make them gray and sad. Exactly, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's like what it do here on the plane of the Shadowfell. Indeed. So the castle gets swallowed by one of these dark domains. Um, it is here that pre-4E lore states... That the time he spent here, so close to the negative energy plane, changed Cass into a vampire. Um, I kind of, I mean, Wait, I know wasn't I say, he before? No, no, no. So that was the 4A version. Oh, oh, my bad. Okay. Yeah. This is the pre 4A version. So gotcha. you're saying, okay. here's where he turned into a vampire. I do find this a little lamer because he's just like sad and imprisoned becoming a vampire versus like he got empowered into vampirism. Like, I like this idea that they they set down a Vecna really creating his downfall. Like, you had this guy, and, and you raised him up to your lieutenant, and then you turned him into a vampire to make him even more powerful, and then you gave him the best sword in the world. And then that sword made him kill you. <laughs> I mean, the best sword in the world. Well, you, yeah, Power, you know what I mean. Powerful. Very, very good powerful for, sword. Good for Cass, yeah. Yeah, very good. The best <laughs> sword for Cass. <laughs> but anyways... um. Uh, when Vecna was defeated during his bid for control of Earth, this is so. Remember, uh, Vecna gets put into this like weird uh, spiritual state on the astral plane, and uh, he can't interact with anything, but he wants to become a god. Okay. Um, and I don't remember the details, but basically, like he managed to from there uh, apotheose to a god and then try and take over the world. Okay. Um, but of course, he failed. Probably adventurers. I don't know. Um, so that so while that was happening, um, Cass was imprisoned. In this place, he couldn't get out. Um, when uh, Vecna was defeated, though, Cass ends up being freed from his centuries of imprisonment. So it seemed like Vecna was actively keeping Cass there because okay. when he dies, suddenly Cass is free. Sure. All right. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. It's it was very confusing to try and put to, put this together. Okay. Um, thing was, he was freed from his centuries of imprisonment only to find himself facing a shapeless wall of mist around his new domain. When it cleared, he was the master of the domain of Tovag. That's the name of his dark domain. 
Of Cass's dark domain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Now in his wasteland domain of Tovag, he believes his war with Vecna rages on. Patrols of prisoner soldiers under undead commanders scour the land, dragooning strangers to serve in Cass's armies and to manufacture bizarre war machines. When Cass deems the time right, he sends his forces into the mist surrounding his domain, believing that Vecna's realm lies just beyond. Invariably, those troops never return, leaving the vampire to rage, rebuilding his forces and continuing his search for the Sword of Cass. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. He's probably telling people, like, look, I saw this thing in Vecna's lair one time. Rebuild it for me. I don't know how to do it. I'm stupid. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Um, and in Cass in Cass's defense here of him thinking Vecna's over here. So it seems like at one point there's a dispute with the writers because a lot of the older stuff, Vecna was there. And they oh, were fighting. Interesting. Okay. But now it's like, no. Well, we know that's kind of not true because Vecna's off doing God things now. Mm-hmm. So, like, is this an imposter or does this person even exist? And now at 5e, it's just like, it's a delusion of Cassidy. Yeah, it's the illusion that Vecna is, must be there somewhere. Yeah. The secret guy and all his powerful magics. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, um, the thing is, in the in the second edition lore, um, he can literally see Cavitus over here. He's in Tovag. Cavitus is here. There's mist between, and they're like sending armies at each other. Yeah. Right. So, like, in Castle's defense, he thinks Vecna's there because Vecna's castle's right there. Sure. That <laughs> that makes sense. But it seems like Cass is just crazy at this point. Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and probably his delusions are being fed by the dark powers. Sure. Yeah. So Cass dwells in a great fortress in the northern portion of the domain. In the south lies the densely packed city of Tor Gorak and the expanses of farms that supply grain and other crops to the inhabitants. Mm. A number of Welsh constructed flagstone highways run across the countryside. The most noteworthy of these is the Carsican Way, which runs between Tor Gorak and the Fortress of Cass. Three lesser roads run to the west, vanishing through passes in the Burning Peaks to emerge in the domain of Cavitus, which we have explained in 5e cosmology, isn't actually there. Okay. So pre, pre-5e, pre probably pre 4 e the roads actually did go to Cavitus, which was its own dark domain. Now, those roads just go nowhere. Okay. Uh, despite the fine quality of these roads, they are rarely used. Uh, the poor souls who live in Tor Gorak accept their lot in grim silence. They recognize that theirs is a harsh master and speak of vampire cast only in whispers and guarded tones. They know too well that the creature who rules beyond the Burning Peaks is far more terrible than their own lord. Propaganda. Mm. Um, the inhabitants of Tovag tend to have very large families, mostly because the overlord pays a decent bounty for each child born. Those who live in this domain also age at an accelerated rate. Most reach maturity after about nine years, allowing them to be conscripted into Cass's army sooner than would be possible elsewhere. Wow. Any visitors who remain in this domain for more than a month begin to age faster as well. <laughs> Fucking nine years old. Just yeah. a full-grown man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Go to war. Time to die. <laughs> We've been talking about some evil dudes lately on the show. <laughs> it's just, well, it is, it's a spooky season. Yeah. There's nothing spookier than living your whole life by age nine and then being sent to die, sent to die in a weird <coughs> delusional war. Absolutely. I mean, I'd be terrified. That'd be scary to me. Uh, <laughs> Cass maintains a constant wartime mentality, forcing, forcing his people to live the most meager of existences in order to save important supplies for his endless war against Vecna. He cares nothing for these people, seeing them only as instruments in the effort to destroy his former master. Life in Tovag is dominated by routine searches of people and residences, a complete lack of personal liberties, and the crushing heel of a tyrannical police state. The state police, known as the Daggers, search continuously for traitors, spies, and criminals. The Daggers have the power to sentence and execute criminals on the spot. Little matters like evidence and guilt are seldom important in the meeting out of justice. I mean, how's that different than... You know what? Never mind. <laughs> Although he is unable to fully understand what power holds him in place or how he came to be here, Cass the Destroyer has found meaning in his existence. <laughs> well, wow. good for you, Cass. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy for Cass. <laughs> he truly believes that Vecna, his most hated enemy, rules the land of Ash to the west of his own nation, and he seeks revenge for the time that he spent in Citadel Cavidius. Kev- Kevidius. Uh, nothing Cass has vowed will prevent him, nothing, Cass has vowed, will prevent him from destroying the creature who kept him prisoner for so many centuries. Yeah. Well, I mean, this all happened because of the sword. It's all the sword's fault. They're, it's true. Like the, if you they lift, were a dynamic duo. Exactly. If you lift all the poison of the sword out of the relationship, yeah. then they could be besties again. But the thing is, it's Vecna's fault. Vecna couldn't just trust him. 
That, yeah. That's all Vecna yeah. had to do. He just had a choice, but he was worried about secrets. He's worried about his and secrets. And there, there it goes. He just wanted to know what he's up to. Yeah. It's 10 at night before bedtime. <laughs> had to know. Are you thinking of me, Cass? <laughs> Spoiler alert. He's over attached. He he's was. over attached girlfriend. That's yeah. Vecna's over attached girlfriend. Does, Vecna does not respect anyone's boundaries. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Cass <laughs> sees only one road to victory. He believes that gaining possession of the sword of Cass will give him the power he needs to destroy the overlord of Covidius. Further, he is convinced that the sword is hidden somewhere within Tovag. With that in mind, his agents and members of the daggers are constantly searching for it. Little does he know the sword is actually still on Earth. Yeah, or Earth. Or Earth. But you say that, oh, so they know. Yeah. Oh, so they know. <laughs> when Cass wills the borders of his realm closed, he summons into existence a terrible storm of whirling swords and daggers. Those who try to press on will discover they can never reach the other side and will continue to suffer damage until they retrace their steps and leave the storm of razor edge blades. Hot. Cass is fucking dumb. <laughs> Cass is dumb as fuck. <laughs> I love him, but he's dumb. Yeah. He's an endearing bad guy with a bloody, In a way, with a bloody yeah. hand. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's take short rest. Okay. <laughs> it's the grand adventures of Ilian and Beard. Come, Beard. We finally arrived at my wizard's tower. Here, I shall do the research necessary to find the locations of the remaining shards of the pendant of plenteous patrons. I was a little worried about our, our, our hag negotiations, but it seems to have worked out. It really wasn't even that far of a walk to get here, but yes, wow, there's a lot of stairs in here, Ilian. Yes, as uh, is tradition, my laboratory lies at the top of my tower. Oh, that, that kind of makes sense. You, that, no wonder. I've always I've seen your calves. They are mighty, my friend. <laughs> Mighty. <laughs> Thank you, Beard. You are kind. But enough about my calves. Quickly, up the tower. Hut, yes. hut, 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 hut. <laughs> ah. Ah, my, my scrolls, my books, my tomes. Ah, oh, yes, over here. Oh, uh, yeah, there's, there's so many. Yes, I, I I have much knowledge, Beard, and I shall utilize this knowledge to triangulate based on the cosmology of the planes where the shards likely fell. That's great. In our great. Good, plane. good, a good so, lead. Um, yes. Do me are. a favor. Go off in the corner. Do whatever it is you will, and I will get to research. Yes, I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint the faces of those who betrayed us, unknowingly, and without our consent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do that. Yes, I'm gonna set up my easel. Yes, yes. Clear the space. Do you do care it. if I move this little, this little vial here? Do, do whatever you must, Ben. I'm busy reading. <laughs> By the gods, my pack, it, my paint. Ilian, my paints. They're, what? They're full. They're completely oh, full. I suspect that our carrying of the shard of the pendant of Plenteous patrons has patroned your acrylic paintings. Bless the backers. And bless the backers. Bless, bless the backers. The backers. I, <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay. I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Let me get back. I'm going to get back to it. Yes. Think about how much more we can be funded if we find the remaining shards, Bian. Yes, and if if, if 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 you figure out where they could be and I'll figure out where, I'll put a, a nice painting of these busts together to figure out where these two mysterious uh, people are. Maybe they have information and we could see on our travels of somebody, you know, just something to, something yes. to think about. Sounds brilliant. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, I have much reading to do. Yeah. Lots of grays and, and nasty, you know, the dark hair. Uh, this one had short hair. This one's a little bigger. This one's a little smaller. Uh, the, the nasty hype is what he has. Ben, voice? Ben, come over here. Something's happening. The, the, the shot of the pendant of Pelagius Patriots is spinning rapidly oh, no, and I'm hovering. Gonna, I gotta get this eyebrow right. And no, I'm you have to come see this. Okay, right okay, now. okay. I'm over. I'm coming over. I'm coming over. What, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just fart? <laughs> no, it. <laughs> the pendant. The shot is stopped. What was it doing? It was it was hovering above my hand and spinning rapidly. That's so strange. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad it's not like defunct or anything at this point. Um, oh, I'm not sure what it was doing, but it was interesting. Oh, you may go back to your painting. Yeah, let me know I if it does any, I, anything else. I'll I will let back, you I'll know. get back to it. Uh, this one's shoulders were a little broader here. Stroke, stroke. Oh, oh Ben, it's happening again. Oh, okay. Come, okay. come look at this. I just want to paint. <laughs> What's going on? It's, it's okay. Okay. a mysterious okay. artifact. All right. What, what do we got? Oh. I, I swear, this isn't like you, Alien. I didn't even see you eat anything fibrous. It's because I haven't eaten anything fibrous, Ben. If you think about it, we the haven't pendant, eaten. The shot is stopped again. I, I don't know what to tell you. I haven't eaten for days. I, I, you know what? 
It seems to activate when you're painting. Do me a favor, Ben. Go and paint your picture. Yes, of course, of course. That's all I want. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the shadows under the eyes. Yeah, here. it's happening. Keep painting, Ben. Okay, keep I'm painting. Gonna keep, I'm gonna keep painting. It's spinning rapidly. Oh, oh my I believe goodness. you. It's fine. It's beginning to glow. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's going fast. I'm, I'm messing up my painting because of how distracted I. Oh, whoa, whoa, Ben! It's blasted a, a, a beam of light, a continuous beam, and it appears to be shining directly out of this window here to the northeast. That's, that's, wow. Wow, oh, wow. wow. The light is just, it goes. It's goes the middle of the day. It's the, see the whole beam? Yes, it's, it's incredible. What is it, what is it pointing at? What's over there? The northern mountains, Ben. You know, I, I heard a rumor on our way here to the tower that a meteor recently fell in that area, in that region. Uh, perhaps it was no meteor at all, but a shard of the pendant of Plenty's patron. You know, now that this is happening, that seems pretty likely. And, uh, yes. We saw like four people on our way here. That's amazing. You've got great hearing. We didn't even talk to them. <laughs> I, I must just be distracted. I am a wizard, Ben. Yeah. I have eyes and ears in many locations. That's I hear and see much. That's true. According I to have, in fact, heard that the crater left by this meteor has come to be called Creator's Crater. That's, I wonder why. That's a great name. It's a rather auspicious name, it's true. Maybe something has been created in the crater, or some creation is born of the impact. We must go find out. There's only one way to find out. Let's go! Let's, let's do this. Let's do it. Hut, 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 hut. We've returned. Indeed we have. We're fucking back. Indeed we We're are. We're talking about the Sword of Cast. Indeed. But, uh, before we do that, if you guys want to help Ilian and Biren on their adventures to find the shards of Plenty's patrons uh, and collect them all, they've got to they've got to catch them all. The the undefined, unquantifiable number. Yeah. Who of knows? the many shards. Who could possibly? Of the pendant of Plenty's patrons. Who fucking knows how many there could be? It's just a daunting task that they will accomplish. Indeed, they will. They'll take it down. Um, yeah. Uh, you can go. You can do so at patreon.com slash dungeon cast. Give them what they need. They got a little taste, you know, but they need they need the whole thing. Yeah, it's they need the whole thing. Out. It's not going to work sustainable out. sustainable right now. Nope. Um, let's see. Yeah, we got the sword of cast. It is uh, it's magic. Don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> it's, it's a also, long sword. It's a sentient long sword that grants a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with it. It scores a critical hit on rolls of 19 or 20 and deals an extra 2d10 slashing damage to undead. Just interesting. That is interesting. I think it wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, doesn't Vecna command like, um, a lot of necromantic sort of ar armies and things like I, that? He's a lich. Yeah, I think the idea here is the sword... The sword probably puts a particular amount of energy into killing undead because remember the sword hates Vecna and wants Vecna to get taken down too. So probably didn't get made that way. Probably yes, exactly. Like That's what I'm, that way. That is what I'm implying. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. If the sword isn't bathed in blood within one minute of Oof. being drawn from the scabbard, it is its wielder must take a must make a DC 15 charisma saving throw. On a success, the wielder takes 3D6 psychic damage. On a fail, the wielder is dominated by the sword. Uh, as if by the dominate monster spell, and the sword demands that it be bathed in blood. Bathed in blood. Well, if you're fighting undead, like what kind of blood is that? Is it point. real blood or is it just if, dust? That comes if Vecna out of really wanted to be an asshole, he would just do all skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do now, Cass? <laughs> just take some psychic damage, you're, I you're guess. You gonna draw the sword? <laughs> Good thing you have a nice smile, Cass. Well, the sword—it's almost better for the sword to just take over. I guess so. Yeah. Like from a player standpoint, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. At okay. least I didn't take damage. Yeah, and from Cass's standpoint, it's like the joke's on you. The sword has been in charge the whole time. It's interesting because, like, do we use the fourth edition bloodied like thing here? Like, mm. do I have to sh strike at someone that's half damage, or does it? Do I just need to land a hit? Yeah, bathed in blood is very imprecise language. Right. Do what I need to make mean? a kill? Like, do I need do you to, have to make a kill? Make a kill. Yeah. That's. Do you, you know, need get ten turns an actual it. bathtub? 
and have to. Do, some- yeah. Do I need to throw the sword in the tub? <laughs> They've got a, we've got the, um, what are they called? You just got uh, a that, guy who rolls a tub along with you. Yeah, you've got the cannons, you've got the you mortars and the trebuchets and all that shit, and then you've got a guy dragging a tub. Where's my bathtub? It's an ox. With I gotta a fight this guy. Where's my bathtub? <laughs> I tricked you again, sword. <laughs> hey, how come this tub isn't filled with blood? <laughs> Somebody fill this tub with blood right now. Right now. Yeah, does it need to be human blood? I don't think it, it needs to be. Yeah, can it can it be a uh, non sentient being you know what i mean can it just be a cow or a, a pig right can you crush a mosquito and, and, and juice it on the motherfucker relevantly speaking like the mosquito is mostly blood at that point so yeah yeah it's if it's fully engorged mosquito yeah and to be fair that blood could have come from a human it, it probably you know did or an animal but whatever yeah so but if you do if the sword's demands are met the spell effect ends so yeah you can you can get back it's like you're not doing it right, and the sword takes over, and is like, "Got it, got it, okay." Yeah, I suppose, I suppose the sword would would direct you if you kept failing, and then you would know. Well, that's what that's how the it's, sword it's likes going. It. It's like you, you're not fucking doing it right. Yeah. Uh, now I am you, and I will make the bloodbath. Yeah, I will make the bloodbath, and I, I will demonstrate moving forward. This is what you do. Yeah, take a back seat. Watch me through your eyes. Do the bloodbath. Let me put on this five minute YouTube tutorial. For you. <laughs> Just watch this video. Um, no, five minutes is too long. The sword can get it done in under ten turns. Oh shit! So That's like yeah, it's sixty a, seconds. It's a YouTube short. Okay, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so do you want to roll some random properties for the sword? I do. Tell me how many of each the sword gets. One minor, one major of beneficial, and then one minor, one major of detrimental. Okay, so one of each. All right, so let's start with the beneficials. Sure. Uh, the minor beneficial. Tell me the number. Uh, twenty. 20. While attuned to this artifact, you gain proficiency in one skill of the DM's choice. Um, animal handling? Okay. <laughs> Better get that cow blood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty good. I actually don't like that. Or I actually do like that. Um, here, I'll it's roll. a surprising one for sure. It is. I wasn't expecting it, but it, it, you know, if you really need that blood, you need to handle that animal. All right. Let's do the major beneficial property. Uh, we got 18. Man, you're rolling low today. Uh, while attuned to the artifact, one of your ability scores, DM choice, increases by two to a maximum of 24. Um, oh, definitely constitution if it's not there yet. More blood. That or, or that's true. You can have more blood in <laughs> you. You can bathe your own. I was thinking <laughs> wisdom for that better perception for smelling blood better. Ooh, okay, yeah, wisdom's pretty I good. need you to find blood. Here's some wisdom to help you. Dexterity to be faster at finding blood. Absolutely. Charisma for, for getting people to give you their blood. Yeah, we don't have to cut them. They'll just <laughs> hand it over. They'll cut themselves. Intelligence to come up with the bath plan that we came up with earlier. Hey, uh, <laughs> like charisma, charisma check, persuasion to get in the tub. There we go. Get, get, hey, get in the just, tub. Can you just get in this tub? Don't ask me Don't any, ask questions any questions about it. Just get in the tub. All right. All right. Here are the detrimental. Here's the, the minor, minor detrimental. detrimental. Another zero. 90. 90. While you are tuned to the artifact, animals <laughs> 30 feet of you are off. Yes. <laughs> They're like, oh, shit. It's that guy. <laughs> Don't talk to him. Read the whole thing. Read the whole thing. Sorry. While you are tuned to the artifact, animals within 30 feet of you are hostile toward you. But it's okay because you can fucking handle them. <laughs> what are the odds? That's well, so good. That's so good. All right. Let's do the major. All right. Last one. Out. Last one. Oh, can we maintain this synergy? 81. <clears throat> 81. Each time you become attuned to the artifact, you age you age 3D 10 years. Holy shit. Oh, fuck. You must succeed on a DC 10 constitution saving throw or die from the shock. <laughs> if Can you imagine you... aging three years and then fucking dying? <laughs> no. No. I didn't. I had plans for my 40th. We rented a yacht. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yacht. Damn. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. If you die, uh-huh. you are instantly transformed into a white. Oh. Under the DM's control that is sworn to protect the artifact. Okay. Okay, so that's just a sword taking it completely out of your hands. You're like, I don't trust you to get the blood I need. Like, uh, I'm just going to take over you permanently. I'll just make you a ghost and you can hand me <coughs> off to somebody worthy. Yeah, uh, there you go. Okay, I'm going to age right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what did you age? Uh, so far, six years. I need to roll one more die. <clears throat> 
Eight years. Eight years. It could be worse. Uh, yeah. If you're an elf, that's nothing. You're like, that's fine. Eight yeah, minutes. fuck it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All no. right. Tell but me. unless you die of the shock. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I wasn't ready. Oh, back to Coralon. Oh god! All right, all right. Tell me more about the sword. The spirit of Cass. While the sword is on your person, you add a D10 to your initiative at the start of every combat. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. In addition, yeah. when you use an, an action to attack with the sword, you can transfer some or all of its uh, attack bonus to your armor class instead. Oh, so like a defender sword. The adjusted bonuses remain in effect until the start of your next turn. Spells. While the sword is on your person, you can use an action to cast one of the following spells. Save DC 18 uh, from it. Call lightning, divine word, or finger of death. So real quick, I want to talk about Spirit of Cast here because I think the wording is is clever. Um, in addition, you can use an action to transfer some or all of the attack bonus to your armor class. So if you crit, it is a great time to do it because you crit. Oh yeah, You're going to get a critical hit and you're not... Um, losing damage because you're just transferring the attack bonus, not the damage bonus. Mm-hmm. Because it, it could have read uh, you could transfer the enhancement bonus, and that would have been both. Okay. So I just think that's this really good wording because I think that is the intent. Nice. Good um, job, wizards. Yeah. No need to do better on this one. Yeah. Um, once you <clears throat> use the sword to cast a spell, you can't cast that spell again from it until the next dawn. So you get a call lightning, a divine word, and a finger of death. So, uh, sorry, real quick aside, um, Star Seekers got a Dragon Star moment. Uh, I just did the chapter with artifacts and stuff. Okay. And, you know, you we were trying to keep the language as close to 5e as possible for continuity's sake. Artifacts, for some reason, all of their refresher stuff is tied to the next dawn instead of a long rest like abilities are. Okay. I'm not sure why they chose that, but it's very difficult to use that in, in space. a space setting. Yeah. Who's Dawn? When Dawn? When exactly, Dawn? Yeah, Dawn of the yeah. home world of so, like whatever planet the item is from. I I think uh, I'm trying to remember now because that was like it was like a month and a half ago. But I'm pretty sure we we just ended up going with long rest. Yeah, that's just, easier. It's, yeah, it's universal. I wonder why they went with Dawn. There must be a good reason for that. Yeah. But um, sentience. I mean, yeah. In this, if they went somewhere, it'd be like Dawn of the whatever plane of existence you're on. I guess right, is what I would right. go with. Uh, sentience. The Sword of Cast is a sentient, chaotic, evil weapon with an intelligence of 15, a wisdom of 13, and a charisma of 16. It has hearing and, surprise, dark vision. The sword has dark vision out to a range of 120 feet. It has superior dark vision. Probably, yeah. Well, 120 feet, right? That's the. Okay, the weapon communicates telepathically with its wielder and can speak, read, and understand common. Just in case you walk in and you see. The sword of cast reading the book of vile darkness because it wants <laughs> it's to be totally legit it wants to do more stuff and the it's in those pages <laughs> a personality the sword's purpose is to bring ruin to vecna you know i bet you if the sword was reading the book it would be looking for like the wikipedia article on itself in there yeah what you can I, I, mean? I do that i don't you know, know about or yeah or just like oh what, what does it say about me though you know <laughs> sorry <laughs> Oh, geez. Uh, okay. It's like uh, when you Google yourself. Yeah, you're Googling yourself to see what kind of nasty details people are writing about you. <laughs> uh, killing Vecna's worshippers is also part of the... Uh, destroying the Lich's works and foiling his machinations all help to fulfill the goal of bringing ruin to Vecna. So those are all things you can do. Mm-hmm. The Sword of Cast also seeks to destroy anyone corrupted by the eye and hand of Vecna. The sword's obsession with those artifacts eventually <clears throat> becomes a fixation for its wielder. So not only are you subject to the hand and eye of Vecna, which is next episode, yeah, um, <laughs> that is gonna like corrupt you. We'll find out what it does. <laughs> it's probably not good though, long term, for any good characters. And now you've got the sword of Vecna that wants your bones real <clears throat> bad to be chopped up. Yeah, um, I I really like this because like if you are an adventure party that's dealing with the eye and hand of Vecna, like messing stuff up. You're almost definitely going to run into the sword that's like, hey, guys, I want to help you, you know, and now you got a conundrum. The sword's super powerful and very useful and super wants to do what you're trying to do, but it's also super evil and going to mess with whoever's wielding it. I think that's if you get lucky and you encounter the sword like alone, like without a wielder, you you encounter the sword with a wielder. It's going to try to blow your shit up. 
Not if you're working against the hand of Aya Vecna. The sword might be like, yo, 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 oh, let these guys live. Now you yeah. got like the dark paladin NPC that's like working with you, but he's scary. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you trying? We can be friends until yeah, we until take care of this. You, yeah, you're not after used that. To it anymore. gets complicated. Indeed. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. What is that? Was that the kangaroo? Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I know. I've heard the reference before. God, it was it was trending for so long. <laughs> I just fucking forgot what it was. Destroying the sword. My favorite part of every item description, which I feel like we kind of got away from there for a second. But here it is. Destroying the sword. A creature attuned to both the eye of Vecna and the hand of Vecna can use the wish property of those combined artifacts to unmake the sword of Cass. No wonder he wants those things destroyed. Yeah. Um, they're going to unmake it. Yeah. The creature, not destroy, but it just, it's different from unmake. The creature must cast, well, it says destroying the sword. Is unmaking destroying? This implies yes. The creature must cast the wish spell and make a charisma check contested by the charisma check of the sword, uh, which is pretty good, right? It's 16. 16 charisma. is not bad. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fairly good. Um, the sword must be within 30 feet of the creature or the, sp or the spell fails. If the sword wins the contest, nothing <clears throat> happens, and the wish spell is wasted. I bet you the sword really seeks out paladins of six level or higher because yeah. of that aura of of protection where the, the, the paladin gets to add its charisma modifier to any allies. Hey, there you go. Uh, to um, saving throws. <laughs> Sorry. If, if the sword loses, you're probably right. If the sword loses the contest, it is destroyed or unmade. Uh, proficiency with a long sword allows you to add your proficiency bonus to the attack roll for any attack you make with it. I mean, why? Okay, why are we saying that it is listed as a long sword? You don't need to say that. Like, obviously, I don't know. I just want to remind if you, you can at use the end. a long sword, you can use a long sword. That's what that reads to me. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't have anything to say about that except that you're right. So, what do you think of Sword of Cast, man? Uh, I kind of like the. There, you can leave comments on D and D Beyond. Oh God, here we go. And I like these. Real Gareth nice. Gareth, <laughs> Gareth Staring says, "Real nice." It sounds but, like a man after my own heart. Yeah, with no no exclamation mark, just a period. Yeah, Will Real will nice. read like, "Oh, the the Inagu will eat the bones of the decayed." Blah blah blah. And be like, "Nice." <laughs> That's me and Gareth are right there. <laughs> Lonely Wolf says, "I used this sword to one shot the boss of a one shot once." That's nice. A, that's yeah. some Dr. Seuss level sentence structure. Yeah. My friend was a bit upset, but it's still a funny story to tell. No, that's that's, that's definitely a memorable yeah, one. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Um you know what? I, I'm gonna leave it to the audience. Oh no. Uh, the Brunar battle says, Why didn't Grog use the spells? I guess maybe this sword showed up in crit roll. Spoilers for crit roll. Oh, I was like, who the fuck is Grog? <laughs> I think Grog used finger of death at one point, but you can't cast oh, okay. spells when so raging. I guess, raging, so I guess that's the barbarian why. got the sword. Okay. Oh, I guess you do have to. You are the caster of the spell, so if you're raging, that wouldn't be like the sword. Oh yeah, you can't cast it. spells when you're when you're raging. That's true. Mm. He is a barbarian. All right. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna read any more of those. They're they're good though. They're <laughs> well, fun. with that being said, I guess we could get ready for a long rest. Yeah, let's let's do that. <laughs> All right. Hey everybody, welcome to The Long Rest. This is a part of the show where we put the sharpest slippers on our feet. We the slippies have returned yeah. and they're super uncomfortable. My slippies have like Joker style knives baked into them. They now call me William the Bloody Footed. <laughs> William the Wet Foot, they call him. The Red Wet Foot. <laughs> My slippies want to destroy your eyes and hands. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right, fuck it. The slippies are back, I guess. Not last episode. Due right? to that one person. Just super, one per no, it was more than one person. It had to be one person. No. I'm pretty sure it was one no. person. There was but I support at, that person. At least one person. <laughs> Demanding the return Dem of the slippies. <laughs> it was a long, you know, it's been a while. It's been like two years. <laughs> hey, we, um, well, the, in that two years, people are like, where are the slippies? That's every, true. Every once in a while. Yeah. That's true. I don't know. Thank you for listening to the part of the episode where we talk about hey, slippers. Hey, I'm glad slippies are back. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they they are fun. They're comfortable and warm, but not this Halloween. No. Get fucked, <laughs> slippy lovers. Get stabbed. Kick, kick. You ask for this. <laughs> yeah. Like, they keep finding shards of the Sword of Cass in my slippers. God, that sucks. The slippers of Vecna. <laughs> okay. 
That's next episode. Slippers of Vecna. <laughs> Slippers of I don't Vecna. think we've ever spoiled like what the next episode is going to be so hard until this episode. Yeah, I guess you're right. It just because it, it kept coming, <laughs> it kept coming up. up. It's, it's super it's, it's rare that up. that ever happened. We're leading yeah. up to the the yeah. hand and eye of Vecna all in one episode. Right? Indeed, indeed. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, three of the four spooky episodes this year were Vecna episodes i was like, hype about it yeah he's got the vile book of vile darkness he he's created got- the sort of cast and it's his hand hand in his eye there's a dragon magazine article with like a poll in it that the users must have or users uh the like people wrote in and voted for the poll or whatever mm-hmm. um i found out they used to do that matt like they would put out a call like a number that you could call and yep. vote on shit yep they put there's a dragon magazine they voted like okay what what was i gonna say the vote was I don't know. Oh, like oh. Who, who's got the spookiest stuff? Vecna was voted spooky. Oh yeah, he's, having the spookiest. Yeah, stuff. most spookiest in high school for By sure. By Dragon Magazine readers. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, we uh, we appreciate you guys a lot, and uh, we hit 50k on YouTube, Woo! and that was really exciting. Indeed. Uh, oh yeah, it. we announced the winner. We announced the winner of yeah. our Baldur's Gate giveaway. Congratulations to Bryant Von Miller, longtime listener, longtime commenter. Too. Yes, uh, very like somebody that we've seen in the comments lots of times. Yeah, I I was like, oh hey, it's that guy. He won. I know him. <laughs> yeah, so Bryant so Von cool. Miller. Thank you. Uh, well deserving. And uh, I I believe they got set up on Steam with it, right? Yes. So very cool. Yep. Uh, I it think they were sent. excited it's to gifted. play with their their GF. Indeed. Very fun. Yes. Um, so, hey, congratulations. And thank you to everybody who helped us meet that goal. Um, y- we couldn't have done it without you guys, honestly. Um, yeah. I don't know what that means for us exactly, except for clout. Fuck yes. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking maybe we can do a giveaway for Christmas, but I would like to see some suggestions of what we should give away because yeah. I never know what to give away. Let's ask here. Let us know in the comments what you guys would like to see in a giveaway. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll make we some will, posts on social media. We too will to post see on that. socials and Discord and maybe even Patreon. Yeah. Probably Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, see what kind of get. Maybe we should do a Patreon exclusive giveaway too. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Like a special, like, hey, happy, Merry Christmas. Like, here's patrons, a thank you. Or yeah. Happy holidays. Cause like, who knows? Yeah. Um, but we, to celebrate, uh, I want to read, you know, we read YouTube comments or stuff. A next episode we should do. Um, like Apple reviews? Podcast reviews oh, again, for sure. But because uh, there have been a lot of great ones, and we really appreciate when you guys do that. It helps visibility for the show. We'll probably get back on that now that YouTube hit this big milestone. We'll get back on uh, yeah. Apple Podcast stuff. But for now, or wherever uh, we like, you know, I know on Spotify you can just hit that five stars. Super appreciate it. <laughs> Definitely into it. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, let, I want to read the YouTube comments from Malcontent. So oh, from the Malcontent episode. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. great! They're gonna be horny. <laughs> <laughs> one can only hope. <laughs> well, there's also uh, uh, Sean U4963 says 50K, baby. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. And Because uh, th- there's comments like that in here, too. Oh, okay. I yeah. forgot. Yeah, yeah. We have concurrently ongoing things. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And we got, we got some critiques. It's a fair critique, too. Only Ruindel uh, says, I would subscribe, but I'm looking to hear about D&D, not Batman or Marvel. Sidekick distracts. I think that's me. Am I the sidekick? Sidekick distracts from topic a lot. Other than that, show is great. That's by design. It is so by a, design. It's a fair critique it is a feature. of the show. Yeah, it's a feature, not a bug. Yeah, so that's, but that's it's okay. also it not for everyone. Yeah. And that's we, okay. We understand that we, we, we're we pushing a particular brand of show. Hey, it's okay if you don't like dick jokes. It, that's totally fine. You can... Or jokes about killing cows. Keep it in your pants and move on. <laughs> there's there's other D&D content out there. We're, we're totally cool if you guys go watch that stuff. Uh, Kill Marin 3... F- Kill Marin 3451. Watched you guys for a few years now. Your videos and uh, watched you guys for a few years now. Your videos and conversations are great. Thanks. Uh, Add A D D Dragons says uh, six seven five six says fifty k baby. Uh, edit. I hope it was my sub that pushed it too. How sweet would that be? I remember when that comment came in, and then I went and looked at the subs, and it was like fifty k and one. I was like, maybe it was you. Could have totally <laughs> been. been. Could have been. Um, Burkez with three Z's says, Hey, you two hunky incubi, incubuses. Let's win that Baldur's Gate <laughs> 3 you. game so I can introduce, introduce my girlfriend to D&D. Ah, well, it wasn't you this time, Burkez, but thank you. Um, <clears throat> we appreciate the compliment and hope that you can introduce your girlfriend to D&D and maybe the Dungeon Cast. It's a good starter show, I think. I think. I'm a testament to that. I DM now. It's great. <laughs> I do pretty good. Uh, Logan9189 says... Uh, I gotta do this right. Oh, you boy. only adopted the kink. <laughs> he, said, he says I lost coffee on that one. Oh yeah. Okay. Um 
Let's see. Almithra, Almithra Hopkins, 1873, says, Since when are succubi to Nari? The first of them oh, were boy. Aaron Yeses. Or Aaron Yeses. I know that I know it's Aaronese. They've always been neutral evil, which is why they exist on all infernal planes and why they can freely travel to the prime material like Aaronese. Yeah, if you go if you go back in the editions, even as far back as second edition, uh, they are listed as Tanari. It's they are listed as demons. It was only in fourth edition that they were listed as devils. But yes, they have always been neutral evil and they have always been able to go throughout the planes. But they are technically Tanari. They always have been, as far as all the sources that I read through. Uh, Moss Hive Network 117 says, I can tell this is going to be a popular video. You were uh, right. You were right. It was. Uh, it, it's got above average views on YouTube. Um, and I I liked and, and hearted your comment as I read it. So just so if you got that notification, know that this recording was happening during that. <laughs> um, while you puff, uh, uh, another uh, commenter I'm used to seeing says, uh, first, a word that sounds like Cinnabon. And now a character that sounds like Mike Tyson trying to say Malcolm X. Oh. <laughs> so dumb. That's dumb. <laughs> That's in poor taste. Malcolm but, uh, <laughs> it's tr It might be right. Uh, Anna Cade 4359 says, I love these lore episodes, especially the demon episodes. Very fascinating and in-depth. Thank you for your work. No problem. I also love the lore-heavy episodes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> They're fun. Uh, uh, Malcolm that was a good one the sex ghost every 600 days is weird for sure <laughs> from Kiya 5579 and we're harding and thumbs upping these as we go because yeah. we missed some of them this time there were yeah. a lot of comments on this one um, Mr. Dad 490 says 6 125 for a female isn't too uh, 6 foot 125 for a female isn't too crazy I guess it is if you count the wings uh, Lith the elves Lit Lit Lithe like elves? Yeah, it's think, it's okay. exceptionally lithe. 125, six foot is very lithe. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Um Sandy fifty three says, Can we all just give our love to these amazing humans for the continued patronage to us, the fans? Shout out to Dima Gorgon. Shout out to Dima shout Gorgon. Out to Dima Gorgon. Uh and then Shepherd Druid says, shout out to fuckboy Dima Gorgon. Shout out to Dima Gorgon. Shout out to Dima Gorgon. Hey, we take those. We take those. We fucking take those. Um <laughs> Oh, Brand Colonia is super fun if you like The Princess Bride. And that was a sponsor on that episode. Oh, that yeah, like yeah. Anthony That's, Ambrose. And thank you one. to the Brand Colonia team for sponsoring that episode. Indeed. Um, a slacker named Jack. Hey, hey. Jack. Uh, you're you're deep in our lore. Slacker mm -hmm. named Jack. You mm -hmm. go way back. Slacker named Jack. <laughs> Wasn't there some info that if Malcolm Thet betrayed Dima Gorgon, shout out to Dima Gorgon, it would actually lower his DC or something? I'm shocked that wasn't mentioned in this episode. I never saw that, but, I mean, that would be interesting. I, what would be the lore reasons or well, lore? they consorted, yes. Yeah, but, I mean, like, so she's consorted with a lot of demon lords. Like, why would, why, if she, if she died? Maybe when Dima Gorgon sees Malcolm Thet, he get horny and it make him weak. <laughs> Is that what he means? Just to drive home, how could she use? How could she? How could she is at manipulation? I think how good she is at manipulation. Yeah, but I, I fail to see how like she's dead now, so I'm weaker. They don't really do What's, bonuses. How's like, that manipulation? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I just never saw it. Um, but uh, but yeah, if if yeah, you got they're the just source citing. On that, they're sure. citing maybe they saw some information about yeah. that somewhere. Not saying it should be or anything. Uh, let's see. Morta Blunt says Malcolm Thet, more like Malcolm Thought. Oh, wow. That one killed me. <laughs> um, St Stuart <laughs> Abelman 6657 says, I will definitely be using Malcolm Thet in my campaign. Oh, I, cool. I love seeing awesome. those comments, oh, yeah. by the way, when people are like, I'm putting this in my oh, game. Oh, yeah, she's great. She's she's a great piece for, for either a BBEG or one of the like main BBEGs that are like acting in, in either in tandem or against each other. Timothy Wuton 5331 says, nice dungeon cast video. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Super appreciate it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Uh, Cause there's so, there's a lot of comments on this episode. Uh, oh, yep. I got to stop here. Uh, Sir Nunos 3031 says, Demogorgon got that chaotic evil sexy time. As Modius by contrast, lawful evil, which is missionary, but in the wrong hole. Oh my. <laughs> Maybe I should pre-screen these. Shout you say Dima that Gorgon. every time. 
<laughs> you say that every time. We're I was wait- I knew it was going to happen. We're at the back of the episode, like how where this comment is. <laughs> uh, J D R Vargo two eight seven says, "For me, the Inagu Malcontent rivalry sounds like either bitter exes or Inagu being mad that he got rejected." I mean, I think the rejection one makes more sense. I just like Inagu just seems so much the antithesis of anything Malcontent works with or is interested in um but yeah it's a weird one for sure that they they have a particular enmity uh nathan thaxton 7492 says malcolm that stop kink shaming me graz but kink shaming is my kink so dumb <laughs> so dumb uh, let's see here uh Oh, this is that we talked about this comment off off mic. Warren Peace Eleven says, "Not gonna lie, the Dungeon Cast ads before and after the Alien and Beard show are pretty damn entertaining." <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I, I didn't it. get that one at first. Didn't we mention that yeah, in an episode maybe, already? Yeah, too? yeah, yeah. I I particularly like that comment. That was a good one. Uh, Phoenix Flames Three Two One says, "Ah, the patron demoness of Simpdon." <laughs> it's a very <laughs> modern joke. Uh, what what do they call it? Um. Um, o i o i o binary. Uh, somebody whose comment or whose t- tag is bin- just binary. Uh, okay. says, I thought it was uh, amusing that it was brought up that this sounds like devil stuff in Dragon Magazine four one seven Fallen Angels. There is the lore of how Asmodeus, Lilith, and Malcolm were all once angels who had fallen and become devils. They both wanted Daddy Asmo's favor and took on rivaling tasks. Lilith was used to sway angels and become the queen of succubus in hell, while Malcolm took her devil followers to the abyss to conquer the lair she now controls and took on her own title of queen of succubi. So uh, 471, uh, anything in the 400s is 4th edition lore. Ooh. And in 4th edition, like I said, succubuses were considered to be devils instead of demons. And uh, that story wasn't like, uh, it did catch my interest, Mm -hmm. and so I didn't include it in the episode. But... um, but yeah, it, that's why it's different. It's a long comment. There's more here. After becoming the baby mama for Demogorgon, shout out to Demogorgon, she had allies of the strongest creatures in both the Abyss and the Hells. Though the Demogorgon, uh, though when Demogorgon decided to pull a reckless stunt and she felt like baby daddy Demo was no longer a safety net, she returned to Asmo, where I believe she currently is again in the lore. Can't confirm she that last is bit. Super not. Again, yeah. that was 4E. Um, if it was 471, that was 4E. I think it's and, on the wiki, though. Yeah. But if uh, she's in hell now and and I don't know it, then I missed that article. So Chad Stinson says, uh, <clears throat> lust is my favorite sin. Hey, cool, man. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. That's great. <laughs> uh, Young Animal 360 says, Demogorgon's waifu. Shout out to Demogorgon. Shout out to Demogorgon. Um, J-S-G-E says, four years of listening to this podcast, which is crazy because I don't play D&D, but I love the lore. You guys are such a great duo. Love the set. It's world class now. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Keep moving forward. We just keep doing stuff to make it good eventually until we get it right. Because I don't I don't I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know if that's obvious. Uh Rester's Place says, as like number 43, there's only 623 left for the demon trifecta. I'm not sure what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing some research to make sure cover my bases here on that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, we triggered Will with that long comment. Yeah, I'm not finding anything about her being anywhere near the hells. No, she's just a demon lord. The only thing that might possibly have information uh, that's more concurrent would be the Legend of Drift's visual novel. But I'm pretty sure that even though it came out in 2020, that's from the past. But there is an awesome image of Malcontent in that. But I don't own it, so I haven't read it. Soul Stealer WX4IH <laughs> says, Yay, another dungeon cast to listen to keep up the great... Another dungeon cast to listen to. Keep up the great work, guys, and praise Demogorgon. Shout out to Demogorgon. Uh, mm, 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 mm. And then, uh, you know what? Let's call it there because my uh, there's so many comments on this. Yeah, I'll just keep going. <laughs> there, well, it's low now. It's stuck loading. Oh, I see. And I, I see. I, I've been skipping around a little bit, but I want to thank everybody who who reached out and commented there. It was um, it was a good one for sure. A lot Indeed. of fun to read those as they came in, and we we really appreciate you guys. So thanks a lot. For listening to the show, making it to the back half, commenting, interacting with us. Um, speaking of interaction, you can do so in several places, including our Discord. Will can tell you all about our social media interactions. 
Yeah, you can find us on Threads, on uh, Instagram, on Twitter, for, or X when formerly is Twitter. Let's just get ahead of everybody and call it X I'm because not. there's so many people that are like, I'm not going to call it X. I'm going to keep calling It's not. It's Twitter's gone. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. I don't know, man. It's still Twitter.com. Really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> it is. Why would it be that still? I'm pretty sure it's that still. Okay, we're pulling it up. Um, because I think you can't actually get X.com is the problem. Ah, uh, yeah, that's probably for porn. Probably. Yeah, Twitter.com slash home. Okay, that's fine then. You can call it Twitter if you want. <laughs> yeah. Man, fuck Elon Musk. He's an idiot. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Mastodon? We are on Mastodon as well. Yes. Did you say Instagram? I did. You said threads. Yeah. Um, there's links for all this stuff in, below. We have a P.O. box. You guys can send us physical mail. And we have uh, an email account, the dungeoncast at gmail.com. If you're interested in advertising, we have advertising available for pre-roll, mid-roll, post-roll if you want it, I guess. And then uh, we have special advertising uh, going on for Ilian and Beeren. They will wear a sponsored logo during... <laughs> A side like quest. NASCAR drivers. Like NASCAR drivers and now hockey players and baseball players and anybody else that can wear. Dude, they put. Uh, I'll save it for a dungeon chats. All right. Um, are but, we doing that today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, at, we are. Uh, we are available at all those places. Come talk to us on Discord. We'll try. We'll probably answer you, unless you're being a jerk, which you're probably not, because most people that listen to the show are pretty cool. Um. Do we have anything else we want to add before? Uh, oh, uh, the giveaway is over, like we said, uh, but the uh, Star Seeker's Guide to Draken Star is still <laughs> ongoing, and Indeed. it's something that yep. you can get. Yep, um, absolutely. Just go to drakenstar.com, check the link in the description. If you are interested in our own campaign setting based off our show, Super Quest Saga, a space opera slash science fiction slash science fantasy anime-inspired adventure. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'm working real hard. We got three three more chapters to write and get edited, and then and then we're working on printing. Home stretch, baby. We're, we're in the home stretch. Lights at the end of the tunnel, and this this book will hit uh, not shelves, but your shelf if you if you want it to. Indeed. And yeah, link links down below for that too. Uh, and <clears throat> yeah, that's where we can call it a game. Let's, Let's call it a game. I'll talk to you guys later. Dungeon Cast.